I love a good series and one of my favorite ones I've started here on my channel are my wood DIYs with fence pickets. I love taking something so inexpensive and making some awesome decor with it. So today we're doing it again, this time for fall and Halloween. You're watching Whiskey and Wet. My name is Whitney and a huge thank you to Fetch for sponsoring today's video and supporting my channel. Another huge support system for me and this channel are my Whiskey Craft Buddies who are here each week to DIY along with me. I am so thankful for you guys. If you're not already a craft buddy but you wanna join us, come along, there is room for everyone. Be sure to hit subscribe down below so you can DIY along with us and join the Whiskey Craft Buddies. For all the projects in today's video, we are gonna be using dog-eared fence pickets that are made out of cedar wood. Now you can go whatever direction you want with these fence pickets, but I like the cedar dog-eared fence pickets the best, and you can also use reclaimed wood as well. When you're looking for your pieces, make sure to look down the wood and not pick any of the curved ones. It might take you a couple minutes, but it's worth it. Get a lot of questions on pressure treated versus cedar. So I'm buying the cedar. It's a little bit more expensive, but I like it because it's not chemical treated and it's naturally rot resistant. The pressure treated ones, as you can see, there's little green flecks in it and that does not stain well. So if you're gonna paint it, you can do that, but note that when it's pressure treated for weather exposure, you really probably shouldn't have it in your house and that's something I've learned over the years. So I instead spend a little bit more money and go for the cedar. It smells really good when you cut it and it's just a prettier wood in my opinion. I'm going to be cutting the projects on my Ryobi seven and a quarter inch saw. I've had this for years. This is the one I use in every video, but you can also use a variety of other saws as well as a miter box if you don't have one of these. You definitely want to make sure that you have some eye protection. I like these because they act as sunglasses as well. And we're going to get started with a one by six by six fence picket. I am going to be cutting these pieces seven inches long to resemble a postcard. And a trick here is to put the larger piece of your wood on the side with your dominant hand to make sure that you are being safe with the saw. Once I had those all cut, I made sure to give them a good sand. And then I printed out these fun printables that will be free over on my blog that are size two five by seven. Once those were all printed out, I headed over to the wood and gave it a quick coat of Mod Podge. While that was drying, I used my little slice cut to cut everything out. And I've had so many of you guys ask me if I could do some Charlie Brown DIYs. So I thought this would be a fun way to incorporate it. I did a variety of fall and Halloween as well as the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. And what we're doing is after that Mod Podge has dried, we're going to put the paper right on top use a Teflon sheet, which I got these from Amazon. I just like it because it protects the printout and it is also more sustainable than throwing away parchment paper every time. Once everything is pushed down, it took me about a minute on the medium setting on my press. I sand down any rough edges and this is good to go. You could do this honestly with anything from sheet music to family photos, book covers like I did here. And they're nice because the fence picket is thick enough for it to sit up on your shelf. I know Finn will absolutely love these. It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown that look kind of like books, kind of like signs. So if you're into that, be sure to check out my blog. This next one is another craft buddy request and that is for some more of these leopard seasonal prints. We're going to be making these tags and all you need to do is take a fence picket and cut the top off 12 inches long. Seriously, that is it. Now, if you don't want to grab two fence pickets to make this, you could easily take a 30 degree angle off of each side of the second piece to make your own dog ear. Now here I'm taking a one inch paddle bit to create a hole for my tags and thank you to the craft buddies that commented to tell me to put it on top of something to decrease the blowout on the back to make a better hole. It definitely helped and I love learning from you guys as much as you love learning from me. Once I gave it a really good sand with 100 grit sandpaper, that's what I'm using on everything, I stained two of the tags and then I painted one orange and painted one black. Now with the chalk paint, the vinyl's going to stick just fine so you don't have to worry about anything after you paint. But for the tags that got stained, I like to give it a quick coat of Mod Podge. I'm going to do the entire thing. It's going to dry clear, but it's going to look more finished than just putting it where the decal would go. Then I cut out these individual SVGs. I'm gonna have these over on my blog as well because I designed these. I did one with ghosts for Halloween and one with leaves for fall. You guys know I love my paper transfer tape to apply to any surface that I just painted or stained. And you can scan this little QR code to head right to Amazon to purchase the kind that I use if you're interested. I'm going to apply the fall one to the orange in the exact same way that I did the Halloween one. And you can also take some of the little pieces before it gets set and move it around if it ends up landing right on the opening that you drilled in your tag. 
Now, because these are going to be inside, I'm not worried about sealing them because the vinyl will stick just fine. And then I did Hey Boo for the ghost one. And then I did Leaves Are Falling, Autumn Is Calling for the other one. I like the white vinyl that pops off of the stained color with a little bit of color in the back. It's as easy as that. And then to finish them off, I used a little bit of Dollar Tree nautical rope to tie them together so they will hang. I think these turned out so great. I did something similar in my Christmas in July fence picket video and you guys really loved that. And I know so many of you wanted some fall and Halloween leopard files. So I hope you love these. Again, you can get these over on my blog. One of my favorite things to make with wood are these crates because they're super versatile and you can customize them any way you want. So step one is you're going to decide how big you want your box to be. I decided to do 18 inches long from a one by six picket. Then I'm measuring the width of my picket so I can cut down the sides, which is approximately five and a half inches. I've got my two sides here and then we are going to measure from end to end to get a piece of wood that is going to overlap both the bottom as well as the two sides. Once I had those pieces, it was time to sand, and here is your cut list, all from the one by six picket. So one for the bottom, two for the sides, approximately 19 inches, and then two about five and a half inches for the sides, but make sure you measure. Then we're gonna assemble our box with the two short sides first with some wood glue as well as some nails. If you don't have a nail gun, no worries, just get some one inch finishing nails and you can hammer them in old fashioned way with a hammer. This just makes it quicker, but you definitely don't need a nail gun for these projects. Once my two sides were set, then I went in with a little bit more wood glue and added either side, again, reinforce with those nails to hold it while the wood glue sets in place. Then I am going to use Provencial by Minwax to stain the inside, the outside, and the edges. I'm going to leave the two long sides not stained and then paint them so I have a neutral background to add my gingham print. Now these are actually some napkins I recently found in the Halloween section at Target. I fell in love with the print and I thought it gave a really fun fall but also a vintage country vibe. We're going to add some Mod Podge just like we did for those postcard signs a couple projects ago. Once it dries we're going to add our napkin that we separated because it's three ply. I just want to make sure I have the thinnest side of it and I'm going to apply it. Now it wasn't long enough to do the entire box so I grabbed a second napkin, lined up the pattern and did the same thing on the other side. Once that's all set, go through and give it a quick sand on the outside. This is just a sanding block I got from Dollar Tree. You don't need anything fancy. You're going to rough it up and it's going to break off where the Mod Podge ends. Then if you've got any edges popping up, I sealed it with a light coat of some more Mod Podge and bada bing, bada boom. I'm so excited to use this for Thanksgiving and beyond and it's a perfect spot to house my Dollar Tree pumpkins. Not only are we saving on wood in this video by using cheap fence pickets, but let me show you another hack that takes the receipts from those fence pickets and turns them into rewards through Fetch. Fetch is one of my go-to apps because I can take a pile of receipts like this from Dollar Tree, Walmart, also takeout from last weekend, scan them into the app, earn points, and then redeem those points for gift cards. First, you need to download the app and you can do that by either scanning this QR code or heading down to the description. Then once you have it open, you're gonna tap this camera button, snap a picture of your receipt, and boom. From essentials like groceries and gas to restaurant meals, and yes, even your fence pickets, any receipt will equal points. And it's super quick to scan a bunch of receipts at once. You can also snap your e-receipts for all of your online purchases from places like Amazon, Walmart, or directly from your email. Once your account is hooked, you just hit the little e-receipt button and it will scan for the past 30 days. I was really happy to see all the points that I got from my Amazon shopping spree. I needed to go on to get all of the stuff for the Pinners Conference that I will be at later this month. And when you rack up those points, you can redeem them for DIY and decor stores like Home Goods, Target, Walmart, Joann's, or you can do what I do and use it to feed your Starbucks addiction because caffeine helps me craft. I always do the Starbucks one, but don't worry if your team Dunkin', they have that as well. For a limited time, my Whiskey Craft Buddies can get 1,000 points by downloading Fetch and scanning their first receipt, like this Dollar Tree one. To download, head to the description for the link, or you can scan this QR code with your phone's camera. After downloading, be sure to use the code Whiskey and Wit, and that's how you'll get the 1,000 point bonus from Fetch. I really adore these pumpkins and they're super easy to make. You're gonna need one of your wide fence pickets as well as a one by four cedar dog inch fence picket, so just not as wide. On your wider one, so that one by six, we're gonna cut two 12 inch pieces. On our smaller picket, we're gonna cut one 12 inch piece. So we're going to layer this into our pumpkin. The front piece is optional, but I think it adds a really fun whimsy touch. 
Then you're gonna set your saw to 45 degrees, measure two inches from the outside and cut two corners off. This is going to start to create a rounded look for our pumpkin. Once you do that, repeat it on your other piece and look, our pumpkin's coming together. Now this is optional, but I decided to take a 30 inch corner off of all four corners of my smaller piece, just a little bit, nothing crazy, but this really helped me when I went to round the edges for my pumpkin. I also needed something for the stem, so I just grabbed some scrap one by two, but you could use a stick from your yard, a craft stick, whatever you have on hand, you can get resourceful, it doesn't have to be crazy. Then we're gonna sand the entire thing with 100 grit and with those edges off, it made it a lot easier to rock my wrist around the outside to create more of a rounded look instead of those harsh edges that you normally find in wood. Then I decided to finish them a few different ways. So all of my stems got a coat of that provincial stain and then I stained one pumpkin, so three of the pieces in that color. And then I decided to assemble the other two and paint them. So all you have to do is add a little bit of wood glue. You can get this super cheap at your hardware store. And then I use the nails to hold it together. Now you could easily just use wood glue and clamps, let it completely dry, but the nails give it a little extra oomph while the glue is drying. Once that's put together, I painted one with Waverly pumpkin and one with this Waverly moss. I absolutely love this color. My friend Jennifer over at Little Bit of Calm and Crazy used it in her recent fall mystery box, a color similar to this, and I fell in love. So I decided to incorporate it into some of my projects here. Then to add the stem, once they're dry, you just literally, you could either wood glue it to the back, screw it on, or nail it. Just make sure you are doing thinner nails. Now for the super fun one, painting that leopard print. I have never done this before, but I've seen a few different variations of it, and I tried to combine what I had learned from different TikTok videos, as you can see up to the left. I did a few different shaped circles, so not perfect circles, kind of more ovals with a little bit of dents out, and then a few different lines. I also made sure to hang them off the edge. Once all three pieces were covered, I went in with some black paint and I did a mixture of C's, squiggles, like kind of number threes on the edges. You kind of want to follow the shape that you originally created with the brown. The brown is territorial beige if you want to match it directly from the Michaels apple barrel line. There wasn't really a rhyme or reason for what I was doing. I was just kind of painting with my heart and I think it turned out super cute. Once that got all dry, I did the same thing with that wood glue, attached it with the nails, and then also added a little stem for that one too. I added a little bit of raffia just to add a little bit of texture, and these three are gonna be so cute displayed together. I love the color combination. I also love the kind of greenish blue and the leopard, super fun. I'm so glad I tried this technique out and it's a lot easier than I thought, and I will be painting leopard print on so many more things in my future. And who doesn't love learning a new technique or skill? Back in July, I made a coffee mug for Christmas and I decided to do one for fall because so many of you guys had such great ideas. So for this one, I'm gonna start with two pieces of those wider one by six fence pickets cut to 20 inches, but honestly, you could cut it whatever size you want your cup to be. I went through and put them together and roughed out with pencil a rough outline of a cup. You could easily cut out a Cricut stencil or do a printable template if you don't wanna freehand it, but honestly, I feel like the whimsy adds to it. I cut the one side to where I wanted it and then I used a marker to essentially do a mirror image on the other piece and I found it a lot easier to cut these and sand them and then put them together. You could also take any scrap from the fence picket to create a straw if you want this to be an ice drink. I decided to go with a hot drink with whipped cream. I had to do a couple finesse things but then once it was ready to go I braced the back with some glue and nails. And then I had a couple of you guys suggest that I should do wood filler down the center so it looks like one solid sign. You guys, that was genius. Again, craft buddies coming in clutch with ideas. I love learning from you guys. That was a great idea that I didn't even think about when I was doing the video in July. Then once you let that wood filler dry, just load it up, sand it down, and then it was time to paint. So here's my process, but you could get creative in whatever way you want. I started by doing the cup orange and my whipped cream white. I also made sure to get the edges so it blended in. Then on your edge, you kind of want to make sure that the one color is dry so you don't get too much of a blend unless that's the look you're going for. Then we're going to do a kind of khaki beige color for the sleeve on the drink. And then once everything was dry, it was time to add some whimsy. So I mixed a little bit of orange with a little bit of white and added some fun polka dots just by twirling around my paintbrush. I made sure to have some kind of hang off the side and look like they were peeking out from underneath the coffee sleeve. 
I used my paint markers to add white and black kind of bubbly lines to make them pop. And I also used that same effect on the outside to just create an outline as well as some dashes. I kind of just do what I'm feeling here. And I also like to look up hand painted signs on Pinterest to look at different appearances and see what I like. That is how I was able to draw this whipped cream because I had no idea where to start and I saw a different sign and I kind of just modeled it off of that. And what is a fun fall drink without some sprinkles? I just use the end of a paintbrush to add brown and orange sprinkles to the whipped cream. Final touch is this Hello Pumpkin Spice Season decal I added right to the handle. You could do a handwriting thing. You could say, hey, fall. You could easily stencil something on as well if you don't want to do the decal or you don't have a Cricut. You guys, the wood filler is clutch and I think I need to remake my Christmas one. The plank look didn't bother me, but now that I know what's possible, my eyes have been opened. I am so excited to display this and you'll have to let me know down below. Do you like pumpkin spice drinks or are you more of an apple fall person? Okay, there are a lot of projects that I absolutely love in this video. So they are kind of duking it out for my favorite. This is one of them. This is a really easy beginner project. You just have to make a couple cuts with your saw. So the first thing we're going to do is cut two of the wider pickets at 24 inches for the back of our sign. Then we need two sides that I cut to six inches to create our candy box. Then measure straight across the bottom with everything laid out like this to create the bottom of your box. Mine ended up being about 12 inches. You're gonna to wanna to measure though. Then here's what you're looking at and we're going to measure across the top to ensure that we have a front piece that will cover just like we did in the box earlier in the video. Once everything is cut, here is what your items will look like. So two at 24 inches, two sides at six inches, and then we've got the bottom and front cut to measure, which is about 12 and 13 inches, but make sure you measure before you cut because it's probably like 12 and three eighths or something like that to get it to be flush. Then I'm just taking some scrap fence pickets to brace the back. Again, glue in those nails. If you don't have a nail gun, go ahead and go through with a hammer and some finishing nails. Just make sure they're one inch so they don't pop out the front. We're going to do that wood filler trick here as well because, like I said, genius and it has opened so many ideas for me. While that wood filler is drying, we are going to assemble the box part of the sign and then we're going to stencil them separately just so it's easier to work with. So I'm going to add both of my sides to my bottom of my box and then once those are added, I am going to add the front piece. Our wood filler is dry by now, so we are going to give that a good sand, wipe it off so you get rid of any of the little dust, and then I decided to stain it in that early American color that I really like. Now for the back of the sign, I'm just doing the edges because I'm going to paint the center, so I figured it wasn't worth doing that, and I also made sure to stain the back, so if anybody sees the back of the sign, it looks finished. Then I'm grabbing one inch painter's tape as well as my new favorite thing, the tape cap. I love using this thing because I don't have to go hunting for the edge of the tape and it makes a clean line. I'm going to tape a one inch border around the outside over the top of that stain that I just added and then I'm going to paint chalk paint over the top. I'm going to peel off that paint and voila, I have a faux border without having to add any more wood or cost or bulk. I'm going to do the same thing, one inch border around the front of my box so it kind of looks like a chalkboard like sign on the front. And then you can customize however you want. You could use chalkboard paint and actually draw on it if you want, but I decided to stencil this trick or treat as well as the back part. Again, is a free file for you. So you can head over to my blog, scroll down to the bottom. It will say whiskey free files, all my branding. It will be a picture of something from this video and you can go ahead and download it. Now I started by stenciling the black paint first, just to match what I was going for to kind of seal the stencil down. And then I went through with some white as well as some orange to add a little bit of color. Now, for some reason, I had a heck of a time getting this to seal. I don't know if it was the humidity that day, but I had a little bit of kind of bleeding here. So once I got rid of all of my little pieces on the inside of my letters, I touched it up with a little brush and it was perfectly fine. Then for the back, I did this fun mixture of different kind of whimsy, kind of cartoon like Halloween images and I went through with orange, white, silver, and a deep purple color to customize it. I just set everything again in black because that was the base color, let that dry, and then I just used these removable makeup sponges to stencil it on. If you don't have a Cricut, there are a ton of great options at your local craft store that you can grab. You could also do letters, so stenciling is not just for Cricut, you could absolutely do it with stencils from Dollar Tree even. 
Now, once that's all dry, it is time to attach it. So you just slide the back into the box here. And I realized I needed to put it on its side to be safe. Safety first, did that, and it was much easier. I did three nails on either side. I forewent the wood glue and it held just fine. Fill it up with your favorite candy, and I plan on using this when we take Finn out trick-or-treating this year. I like to have candy out because a lot of other families do that. We are a young neighborhood, and so kids can go up and trick-or-treat even if we aren't home to hand out candy. Now, this leads me to another question that is so important. What is your favorite Halloween candy? What is, if you had to eat one Halloween candy for the rest of your life, what would it be? Is it chocolate? Is it gummies? Is it sour? What is it? Let me know down below. Mine is a tie between Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and Peanut M&M's. So if you've been following along with my fence picket videos, it was actually this one last year that I created this post for my yard and it is going strong. So I decided to make a fall one because last year I did Haunted Mansion. So I needed a fall one for when my Halloween stuff isn't out. So I started by measuring these wide planked pickets to 22 inches long and I cut three of them. I also cut some scrap one by two so that I could use them to brace the back of the sign. I just went through, measured with, you know, my heart, cut it down, and then I had the braces for the back. Then I decided to do a little bit different of a shape this time. So I used a stain can and created a little scallop curve out of the corner. And then once I cut one, I used it for the other corners. So one piece is going to stay intact because that's just your centerpiece, but then your other two edges will get cut. So you have this in the top and bottom corners of your sign, like so. Then I am going to make sure that the sides I don't want to see are facing up so I can brace the back. And I'm using wood glue again with those nails just to brace everything on the back. Now I originally decided to paint this orange and then once I had a huge orange sign, I wasn't feeling it. So I decided to go back through with that moss color by Waverly and it was so much better. I created this welcome to our pumpkin patch with a fun truck because Finn loves trucks right now. I'm sure you guys have noticed a pattern. A lot of my stuff is inspired by my son because it just warms my heart when he sees stuff that his mom has made and he gets excited about it. So I really have just let that kind of be my guide on a lot of my inspiration, especially because I have designed so many cut files for you guys and it has opened a new area for me to get creative. We're going to set this stencil the exact same way we did with the other sign with that moss color going through with black over the top. And I like to peel my stencil when it's wet. I also went through and sanded down my sign just because it's been outside in the Illinois elements for an entire year at this point, sun, heat, snow. And then once I sanded it down and got the finish off, I restained it in early American. Now, once my sign was dry, all I needed to do was put on the hanging mechanism. I like to use these C hooks you can get at any hardware store. I like to buy them in black so they match. I just drill a pilot hole, screw them in, and hang them up. I decided to also seal it with this triple thick polyurethane just in case it gets wet. That is how everything has lasted. You could also use an outdoor sealant, but I have a covered porch, so I just want to make sure if it gets hit with water, it's not going to have an issue, but I don't need to worry about it getting drenched. And while we're on the topic of porch decor, here is another fun one inspired by you guys from July. I so want to make content that you guys want to see. And when I made my snowman in the last video, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll have to go check it out. But when I made my snowman sign, so many of you said that would look so cute reversible with pumpkins. Well, I already finished that sign. So I decided to make another one to show you guys. And if you want to make these, you could easily make a snowman and a pumpkin one. I laid three pieces out that were 48 inches long and I roughed out what it would look like for three pumpkins approximately to sit on top of each other. Now I am not super Picasso when it comes to my jigsaw, so I am going for rough shapes here. I got something that I liked and then I did the mirror thing that we did with our little pumpkin spice cup a few projects ago and I got both of those sides cut out. Then I needed to create kind of a lip at the bottom as well as a curve at the top so they had the top and bottom pumpkin curves so I marked those and cut them out. And here is what we're working with. Not perfect, but you could definitely work your magic when you are using the orbital sander. Working with the jigsaw, I would highly recommend not sanding by hand because this really helps clean up any imperfections or issues that you have when you're cutting with that jigsaw. I'm rocking my hand around the edges, making sure everything is sanded down. And I'm also taking off any sharp edges just because I think it looks better on the sign. Then again, grabbing a bunch of scrap pieces. You don't need anything else. Just use scrap from other projects to 
you know, hook the back or see if you can grab some value wood from your hardware store. And again, wood glue and nails, just like we have the entire video. Now the fun part, time to decorate. So the top pumpkin, I'm actually gonna paint a leopard print because like I said, I love painting leopard print now. The bottom is going to be an orange chalk paint and the middle is going to be that fun moss color. Once everything dried, I kind of went back through with the bottom of the sandstone pumpkin at the top, which is another Waverly color and this moss one to kind of create some little like bumps and unevenness. So it would look like a real pumpkin or I guess a whimsy pumpkin. I did the polka dots similar to my pumpkin spice cup, but I made these larger. I just mixed a little bit of orange with white and I did two different sizes. Then I painted the top just like I did that other pumpkin. So those wonky looking circles and then followed up with some black detail work. Then for my center pumpkin, I decided to do a technique I learned from Tracy at Country Charm by Tracy, who I will link down below. And she has this fun like gingham print. So you just use a fan brush and I did a mixture of gray and black, did some vertical stripes and then did some horizontal stripes as well. And it's a fun way to get kind of an abstract gingham print. Once I had all my designs down, I went through with some paint markers. These are my favorites from Amazon. And I added some black and white details based on a sign again that I found on Pinterest. That is how I am able to do this. I look at pictures and I try to you know, replicate it as close as I can. And that allows me to create these whimsy looks without just having to pull it out of thin air because my brain does not work like that. I can think of the project, but as far as painting, not so much. I did the same thing with a one by two scrap that I did with my other pumpkins. And then I had a little bit of a gap. So I decided to add a welcome sign to make my pumpkins look like they were stacked a little bit more. So I cut a piece on my miter box and then I cut out this word on my printer. And I wanted to show you how you could transfer any of my designs here. You just print it out to the size that you need, and then you want some tracing paper, or you can color the back of the paper with a pencil, either way. I like the tracing paper because it saves my lead, but whichever works. Then you're gonna line it up where you want it with the tracing paper underneath, go ahead and trace those letters, and then you've got a fun outline. I went through and painted it with some black and white paint, added a little bit of whimsy texture, and nailed it right on the front. I tied a little bit of raffia to the top and I love this sign so much. Again, thank you craft buddies for all of your comments on my video in July. I think that helped make so many of these projects even better for fall. That's gonna do it for this installment of Fence Picket DIYs. Be sure to head down to the comments and let me know your favorite project in today's video and which ones you plan on recreating. Also, while you're down there, be sure to expand the description box so you can see all of the supplies that I use today as well as more information on today's sponsor, Fetch. I love that app. Like I said, it helps feed my Starbucks addiction and I feel a little less guilty when I'm redeeming receipts for the money to pay for the coffee rather than paying out of pocket. You can either scan this QR code or head to the description and be sure to use my code whiskey and whip for 1,000 points after you scan your first receipt. Thanks so much for watching. A huge thank you to Fetch for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Oh, real quick. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos if you're new. So glad you found me and I'd love to have you join the Whiskey Craft Buddies. See you in the next one. Bye.